That's right, ridiculous gaming PC ads are back, and today we've got a heck of a wild ride for you, actually. The absolute most powerful consumer grade gaming and slash or workstation PC available in the world, $6,000. Yeah, stay with me. If you're sick of seeing that same activate Windows watermark over and over, head on over to VIP SCD Key, where they have Windows 10 and 11 Pro OEM keys at a fraction of the price of retail. Just see the secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say goodbye to the watermark. And be sure to use your offer code SKGS for that so sweet discount. I don't usually do this with online PC ads, but we're just gonna jump straight into the description of this listing without any additional context because, uh, I don't really think it needs it. Save thousands today. This professionally built monster cost me almost $10,000 to build, and since then, prices have dropped even further. You still wouldn't be able to build it under $7,000, and that's if the parts are readily available and in stock. I'm only asking 6 k and you could be gaming slash working on it today. My loss is your gain. <laughs> I can't believe we're reading this in an ad. <laughs> That's how you know it's a good one, folks. It's got the best i9, the best 4090, the best 128 gig RAM kit, the best CPU cooler, the best power supply, etc., etc., etc. No cost was spared building this. You would be hard pressed to find any computer that is more powerful than this one right here. I cherry hand picked each component. He didn't just hand pick it. He didn't just cherry pick it. He cherry hand picked it. That's that's how you know you're getting a good deal. I built it for doing my digital designing, but it's actually so much overkill for me that it makes no sense to use. With the money I get from this, I'm going to build a workstation computer that is more suitable to my workflow, which I'm assuming means you're gonna buy stuff that's cheaper because you probably regret building what you built. Anyway, I still have all of the original boxes and I'll list the components so that you can see exactly how stacked this beast is. And then he goes on for a plethora of parts here that we'll dive into a bit more shortly. Now, obviously I'm withholding quite a bit after reading that monstrosity, uh, a few bits of commentary squeaked out, I couldn't help myself. But I'm sure you've also a few feelings of your own among which is likely this statement. This system better actually be epic because if it isn't, we've opened another can of worms. But let's peek first at some photos. For starters, the first bit of media here actually isn't a photo at all, but rather a video. This guy's favorite color is green. I think that is rather apparent. He has several very expensive fans in here. The graphics card looks OP, and uh, it overall actually is fairly presentable. So we can't dock him on the presentation side of things. He's got a close up of his graphics card, a liquid cooled Supreme model. I think you know where this is headed. Obviously we saw in the description already that he has a 4090 in here. And a clip without the green glow is especially useful. We don't have to just be drowned out by one color. We can actually see more about the components themselves. A few extra photos would be nice, but uh, so far so good. Oh, and if you're wondering why we've blurred the LCD in this AIO here, it's because the photo baked in is of what I assume to be him and his wife. Nothing sketchy, just wanted to throw that out there. So now we move on to the specs. <laughs> this is good, just, I'm gonna try to paraphrase here. Intel Core i9, 13900K, that's a 24 core, 32 thread, 36 megabytes of cache CPU, right? He's got an RTX 4090 MSI Supreme in here. He's got 128 gigs of Trident Z, five RGB DDR5 at 6,000 megahertz. He has an ASRock Tai Chi Intel LJ1700E ATX motherboard. He has a Corsair IQ H150i Elite LCD cooler. He's got four, count them, four Samsung 990 Pro one terabyte Gen 4 NVMe SSDs. This is becoming a bit much here. He has a single, I believe, 870 Evo two terabyte. Is this an SSD? Okay, so it's just a two and a half inch SSD, okay. He has two 870 Evo one terabyte SSDs. I, I I don't know where this guy was going with storage anyway. That's what he has. Hey, he's got some Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut. I can't dock him for that one. And then he has a Thermaltake View 51 tempered glass case. We're still not done, folks. 19 Lean Lee Uni fans. These uh, are not cheap, as you'll see shortly. He's got a 24 pin Strymer. He's got the dual 8 pin Strymer as well. Or I think it's a dual eight pin, I don't know. I didn't know that the 4090 had a dual eight pin. Maybe it's like a splitter that he's running. And then we've got the Windows 11 and he's got some weird ESET smart security premium program, which seems kind of sus. This list is 
incredibly long. And while I do appreciate the fact that he's willing to disclose that literally everything in his rig, from a consumer standpoint, there is quite a bit of fluff. For starters, gamers won't care much about 128 gigs of RAM. Nice to have, sure, but it won't make any difference in a vast majority of stock games. I want to emphasize stock, not fully modded Skyrim or anything. The workstation argument is a bit of a different story. Uh, he does mention gaming first though in quite a few places, so that's why I'm bringing it up. The Core i9-13900K is an excellent gaming CPU, but it isn't the best gaming CPU anymore, particularly in its own family. I mean, the 13900KS exists, I believe, as does the newer 14900K. So this sentence is intellectually dishonest. And while we're here, same goes for this bulk of text above it. You wouldn't be able to build it for under $7,000 today is a bold-faced lie. See exhibit A, the PC part picker breakdown. I went out of my way to include literally everything he listed in his description, save the Lee and the Strymer extensions, which don't exist as far as I know in PC part picker's database, and the riser as well. We could toss in 200 bucks and call it even. I also had to choose the View 71 case instead of the View 51, which I assume is a slightly more expensive case than what he's using anyway, so we'll call that a wash. We still only just barely break even with regard to his asking price. Now I know what you're thinking. Uh, Greg, if his price is fair, what's the point? Why are you even making this video? Remember, this is a used system. I mean, sure, there is value in having stuff like this assembled for you ahead of time. If you aren't a DIY kind of guy or gal, and I imagine most of you are, but assembled ahead of time by someone you don't know at this price point is just a little sketchy. You also have to think about, you know, lapsing product warranties. I mean, this is a big reason why used products become cheaper over time, aside from the fact that they literally, you know, degrade from a utility standpoint as technology advances. Another crux of this issue is in the parts choice. We already discussed the RAM. We already discussed the dishonesty around the CPU here. But what about 19 Lee and Lee fans? Remember, these fans are $30 each. That's like 600 bucks in fans. <laughs> That's hard to say with a straight face. Couple that with a plethora of mismatched drives and the excess adds up. I mean, the motherboard alone costs 600 bucks, which you could definitely taper down with a bit of research. Though, I'm sure he felt the need to toss in something beefy to support all of those M.2 drives. In my opinion, these choices are quite poor, and it would be a shame to assume the mistakes of someone else's research, or lack thereof, at little to no actual savings. Then there's statements like this one. I had this built to be the best of the best so that it will still be relevant in 10 years. You're seeing what I'm seeing, right? Look, the 4090 is absolutely a beast. It, it, it's not even up for debate. It's a heck of a card. But 10 years from now? C -c -c come on. It's, it's not gonna be. It still might be sought after, but not for the same reasons it is today. Just look back 10 years ago. What was the card to have in 2014? Yeah, that's a GTX 980. And for reference, this card sells for under $100 today. Now, do I think the 4090 will be selling for 100 bucks in 10 years? Probably not. In fact, I'm fairly certain it won't be. But this comparison gives us a sense of graphics technology's pace. I think even the seller knows this claim is complete bogus. So, is this system a beast? Of course, no one's saying it isn't. I think most anyone would be happy with this combination of hardware, at its core at least. I mean, it's a great CPU and GPU combination, but... There's a ton of fluff baked in here that you're expected to pay for. Couple that with egregiously over-exaggerated and dishonest descriptions and you've got a gaming PC ad that I would stay far, far away from. That's all for this one. Let me know if I missed anything in the comment section below and I'm sure I did because uh, there's a lot to digest here. Consider leaving a like or two, subscribing if you haven't already and sticking around for the next one. My name is Greg. Man, these feel good to make again. Thanks for cringing with me.